You know what this is, this is TTP Season 3. My name is Kyle and I'm here with RMB artist and Thai boxer, Trap Zeke. How's it going? I'm pretty good, how are you bro? Doing alright, alright. Thank you for coming through today, man. For sure, for sure. I'm glad to be here. Hell yeah. So we've got some exciting questions today with regards to both your music and your professional athletics. So I'm going to dive right into it and start by asking you who you are and what you do. Uh, so my name is Trap Zeke. Um, some of you guys know me by my artist name, some of you guys know me by my government name. I'm not going to say that right now, but <laughs> just for jokes, but uh, um, I do music. Uh, I've been doing music for the past, i say, five, four years. Kind of up and down, but slowly gotten the pace of it, slowly started to find my sound now. Like more of like a trap soul, R&B vibe. Other than music, I'm a Muay Thai practitioner, Muay Thai fighter, so I've been training my since past like eight years in Muay Thai so I've been around the around the around the world and multiple countries and competing at international tournaments um I have even represented Canada and Ontario in a couple of uh events nice. and yeah from there it's just been a Muay Thai music <laughs> I did a little deep dive on your Spotify you know I stalked yeah. some of the pages and I noticed yeah. that uh Bryson Tiller would you say he's a big inspiration of yours oh uh, yeah Bryson Tiller that's why I got the Nike cap on right today <laughs> I love it <laughs> Um, I would say like where did how did it begin was like my parents because my parents were very big R and B like two thousands nineties R and B like uh, lovers and like they were like they loved like the genre in itself but then I kind of got that's how I dive into music a little bit like just R and B and then once I heard like trap so I went heard, once I heard Bryson Tiller when I was like when he first dropped uh, even his first album even before that I was a big fan just on SoundCloud and I um I took very like I gravitated a lot from him and then. I kind of just looked at it as like a big inspiration to like what I wanted to sound like my music to sound like, especially with him being in tune with his feelings and being very truthful, true to himself. So, mm. yeah. I respect that. So when did you decide to turn your music into a career and what did those first steps look like for you? Um, from there, I think it was like, it was grade nine or I think grade nine or grade 10. Um, I first uh, started making music under the name Zay Tiller because I don't know why. Hey. Um, I really, yeah, I really, I just really like Bryson Tiller, and then I just, I, I, uh, I started with a friend, and then we it was really, it was really rough back then. But from the progress I made now, now it's been crazy. But, but from then I, I started like, just recording, like just posting songs on SoundCloud, and then once I wanted to take the next step, you know, buying like the equipment, buying like the headset, buying all like the speakers. That's when I started like, at my game up because I knew that I could I could do better than what I am right now so yeah. yeah so you say like it was kind of like this constant loop of like just improving your yeah. like the way you go about the process yeah exactly it's just like you know yeah it's just, just go, keep like not letting one thing like say like one little like nuance just bring it down you know so that's why I just kept it rolling because I knew if I, if I if I could do this now well, imagine what I could do what could it be in the next like year or the next few months you know so got you yeah, so building on that last question, what would you say your songwriting process looks like today then, for example? Um, see with me, like I think I've kind of I feel like not saying from like from experience, but I feel like I've done like probably the both sides of like doing this sporadically and doing it in the studio. But like for me, like since like ever since like COVID and so we've been at home, right? And but I still have my my own equipment here and everything. But like something that I would do is just, you know, like um I try to like like find not find beats but just listen to beats and to get like a like kind of set the mood for myself so like i want to make mm. like an r&b like trap soul type of vibe then i'm gonna create, like find beats or look at beats like that i'm gonna make it more uplifting like r&b like 2000s vibe i want to make i want to find those type of things but then i kind of put myself in that like that mindset i'm gonna make this certain track and then i'll listen to music kind of like to kind of like get me into the zone yeah and then i'll start writing as the beat goes and then kind of feel for the flow and then put on and put on like logic and then just put a beat on it start editing start recording and then just edit from there like edit from, like kind of like i say like uh like just edit and revise as we go as i as i go so word so considering how you work now compared to say when you first started has that process changed and if so how um i would say yeah it definitely changed because before you know before when i first started music i just wanted to put up because you know just put out like whatever how many I can and then once I started gaining some attention and started getting some like notoriety around I was like oh I think people are starting to like this and like I had the opportunity of like doing like two or three shows in 2019 before the pandemic with a couple of friends and it was pretty 
it was so much so much fun and it kind of like felt like we're gonna we're gonna take off with it and then as soon as the pandemic hit it kind of slowed us down and then but it didn't slow us our, our music production but i think nowadays compared to then like i was it was more so i was making music because yeah i i at the time i really enjoyed it like from my heart but i also like wanted to just like be famous you yeah. know now now like um nowadays like i just want to put out music just because i want i like music and i like to like give people like uh like something to connect with something to like uh just um reconcile with because then i feel like my music could especially like from a lot of people like a lot of good people that have told me that you, people relate to my music a lot or like in like deep into their feelings so, so i'm like i want to be able to put that out but not like be so much about like cloud be so much about like being super out there i just want to put out because it's for me and it's for everyone that wants to like enjoy the music at the end of the day you know and i want to dive in now because you got a new single after yeah, i don't know how sir. long it's been almost oh, a year man. almost i'd say oh man i dropped I dropped like February 14th this year, Valentine's Day. Yeah, I say like almost a whole year, Me. to be honest. Yeah. 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 So talk to me about uh, Back to Him. Okay. So, um, yeah, Back to Him. Man. So I actually made this song like a oh, while, wow, a couple months back. And I didn't put much thought into it, like releasing it, because I just didn't feel like it was my time yet to release it. Especially like at the time, there's a lot of people putting out, and I was like, "Whoa, that's so sick!" But then part of me was like, "You know, I'm gonna wait till it's my like my time, what I feel inside to drop it." But I think, um, yeah, when I when I first made it, it was uh, I was going through a lot of things, like especially like um, with like me personally, my personal my personal reasons and everything. So I had to like. Uh, I know music was like my one of my best outlet, outlets. So like I just put it on. I literally um, put it on paper. Like I didn't even like you know how we earlier talked about like the, my process into writing music. Yeah. I scrapped that and I just literally just wrote it down. And so mm. I wrote it down and then I'm like, damn, this sounds kind of really good. And then from there I just like went on YouTube and I honestly I searched up like a beat. The first beat I I saw was like, oh my gosh, it was like the first beat that hit. And I was like, yeah. yeah, this is it. And so like, I just, you know, worked my, kind of like worked my music or worked the lyrics around the beat. So it flowed nice. And then from there, I just kind of like, I held on to the track and I was like, I'm not going to drop this, not just yet. Cause I want to make sure it's perfect. I want to make sure that like, I get, I, I capture people's attention. I capture like, um, the feeling that I want people to be set into the mood of like the, what the song entails, is trying to entail. Right. And like the whole, by the title back to him, it just sounds like, it could be anything like all oh, back to who like well, who is this person like is it are they good for you are they bad for you are they like, like what's the whole what's the whole premise about it right so i want to kind of give like a mysterious vibe where it's just like what's what's the deal you know and then uh yeah so i like i waited a couple months and now it's the end of the year i'm gonna end off the year just to dropping a track and then yeah hopefully from there i'll, I'll drop more Hell yeah, man. I, I love the idea of you just like, it's coming straight from the heart, you know, it was on the paper, pen to paper, and then you found yeah. the beat and you adapted the lyrics to the beat, which is not like a, a common thing for, for, I think, just like hip hop or yeah. even music in general. Um, can you share a favorite lyric or is that on lock? That, that's the question. Oh uh, man, I think, hold on. If I, if you don't mind, I'm going to go on my phone real quick and just kind of like um, see it because um, honestly, it's one of some of the things are pretty straightforward but um i would say man there's oh, so again, much heat <laughs> there's so much yeah there's so much heat man it, it just like it sounds very like um simple but also it just it's also like um the beat Space and the time. whole like the emotion that you would hear on the track yeah. it's just it just brings it all together Jeez. right so like uh, I just, and then I think one of the lyrics I just got, like I said, I just I got your pictures in my wallet. Don't be sharing those, because mm. I just feel like every man or every, at least for me, like from my experience, like everyone has like probably like back then if they had a girlfriend or like had a significant other, that um, yeah, they had probably had something personal with them that they held on to. So like, picture in the wallet, it could also be like I don't know, like a like a stuffed animal that you had from someone, right? Yeah. Something personal that you had of someone, and then now it's like um they're giving that to somebody else you know what i'm saying or like helping yeah. on somebody else so yeah gee that's a that's a drake level caption man you might you <laughs> might find me using that oh like, man yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i know you've also taken up thai boxing and traveled around the world what has that journey looked like for you um so i'd say 
man it's opened up a lot of like opportunities also like made me realize what i wanted to like especially for my career wise especially like um my job wise i wanted to be able to run my own gym or coach like children or coach athletes right it's um like right now i already do that like i, I teach kids i teach adults i also do like private one-on-one trainings Space with time. people because then part of my experience not, not just in muay thai but in taekwondo so i have like years of being in the ring years of fighting and so like a lot of people have are a lot under a lot under my wing especially i have taught i've been learning a lot uh i've been learning a lot from me and so yeah i've been teaching muay thai and f- since for the past four years i've been competing for the past like my whole life in in martial arts in general but muay thai i would say brought me a lot of opportunities with um going around the world meeting new people being able to represent my country being able to um showcase like my talent and also showcase like what um what i could bring to the table what what i could uh like i like to challenge i like to step up and go up against bigger challenges because it's just i feel like there's more to take from it you know mm-hmm. like yes there's the challenges there's fights or there's like um events where it's just like you know like people just win out of nowhere and they don't feel like satisfied like that's why i always go for the bigger challenge because i just feel like like i would sacrifice a lot for this and i'm going to do whatever it takes to get what i want or do like win right so yeah i really like your mindset and the way you approach challenges which kind of leads me to my next question you know beyond these physical benefits would you say that taking up the sport has had an effect on your mental health Space at all time. i'd say yeah man like before it be muay thai would just at the time it would just be more of like a fun thing you know but then i as i started like getting to more like being like watching videos and studying videos and going to these events i realized how much of a how much it's it's it changes people like it bring the muay thai like uh, for my from my perspective and a lot of people from my gym we bring we believe that muay thai brings a lot of community together especially like people that do muay thai and it's yeah. not just it's not always about like oh let's just let's beat up each other let's we're gonna we're gonna go round for round i'll beat the hell out of you no it's just like we love the sport of muay thai and it just brings good vibes all around no matter what even after the fight like for me personally even after a fight i'm just very grateful that my opponent showed up my opponent fought and we fought to the very end and it's because we both sacrificed probably the same amount of things and we both put in everything that we did into this ring and no Mm -hmm. matter win or lose it's just like we we did it we did it um out of like all these things we sacrifice so much and to be here is just a blessing you know so, yeah it sounds like there's a lot of like respect involved yeah which... it is a lot of respect it's just it goes because again it's like it's a it's a grind to like get training camp into the fight it's a it's a huge process it's a huge grind to just be prepared for you know so oh 100 percent for sure um for a lot of things you know i think including sports that mental game is so important you know, people like to focus on their physical capabilities, but at the end of the day, you know, your mindset, your beliefs, how you approach the situation is so important. And I think you really highlighted that well with your last point. So thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah, a confidence fighter is a, da- is a dangerous fighter. I like to say that. I wanted to talk about your creativity and creative process a little bit more. Um, you know, these last few years, as you've mentioned, have been difficult for a lot of creatives, I think. I think a lot of people have struggled to find inspiration. So my question to you becomes, is there anything you've learned over the past one to two years that you're bringing forward with you into your 2022 vision? Yeah, I like this. Um, I think a lot of, like, a lot, like, my mentality has changed. I feel like, especially, like, I feel, I still feel like I'm 18, 17 years old, but now I'm 20, but, like, it felt like, um that like i just grew a lot as a person just matured just seen like the truth in a lot of things or not like i'm like it's not like the truth but like um i've seen a lot of the things that were most important to me especially throughout this like especially quarantine and COVID. just like the past few years the past past first uh, one or two years that i just feel like i've matured as a person and like all my values are all my values and like um are like more more aligned or more there's more uh, focus on them now than before because before there was a lot to worry about and now it's just like i feel like if i keep these few things in line i keep keep it my attention to few, these very few things i'm able to be okay with myself i'm happy with myself i'm content so that's why like for example like my music um like at the time it was just like you know having like uh, it was like all oh, getting all this uh, notoriety knowing like people knowing me now it's just like you know they just feel like for myself for people that want to enjoy it if not if you don't want to enjoy it, that's perfectly fine that's your decision i uh, say like family right like not before i wasn't able to spend a lot of family time now since i were able to be at home 
or like more at home more often i'm able to spend time with them able to see them able to talk to them hang out with them and like yeah it's like those little things like that those get in the night it can mean big it can mean a big thing you know so one thing that i went especially like that first like few months like of covid covid is just like you know things are really rough right now and like how but i imagine myself being like how would i be out of this coming out of this right i'm not gonna let like something like this like especially just being inside just let me down or hold me down from what i want to be like what i want to how i'm gonna put on music or how i'm gonna like train during for fights coming up you know so i kind of like i just always look at the better side of things and say you know what right now it could be a little tough but honestly like god has a plan for me god has has his way of working and i know if he didn't put this on me like he if he didn't believe that i couldn't go through this then he would not do this like do this for me so that's why i believe that you know god like quote unquote drake god's plan um that you know it's all it's on god's work and one day something's gonna show up for you something's gonna come out of it for you so i trust that you know You know, I've, I've been waiting for someone to ask me this question. Just like, even like a friend to ask me this question. What would I say to my younger self? Yeah. Um, man, I would say, I would honestly say that be, ha- be, be happy about the little things in life. And and just keep your, uh, it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, not detailed, but like it's going down to the point. I would say like, keep, um, Honestly, just uh, hold on to your values, right? Because then, so like, um, a lot of people like when, when shit hits the fan. I'm sorry, when stuff hits the fan, it's just like um, people start to fold. And it's like I would tell my younger self, you know what? That like this is happening. This is normal, but don't let it bring you down. Mm-hmm.